you have to do this. Test it for yourself and decide. This is your journey. So grab a coffee, electrolytes, or your favorite drink, and let's go. Hello, my name is Chad. I've been doing carnivore for over three and a half years now. And I originally came in to lose the weight, and I've stayed because, as I say, it's like the fountain of youth. The joint pains go away, the mental clarity just is off the charts, everything else that you've heard. It's all very true. What is interesting is how controversial coffee is amongst the carnivore community. I mean, like two of the top guys, we can take Chafee and Berry. One's okay with it. One would prefer to say, yeah, don't drink it. Caffeine is the most widely used drug in the world. One of the PubMed articles said 80. Another said 90% of folks in the U.S. drink coffee. Enough for 200 milligrams of caffeine a day, which is about the same as five sodas. So a lot of people are drinking a lot of coffee. I think a lot of people drink it just for that morning pick-me-up or to kind of get going. There's a lot of surveys out that will talk about the energy that it can produce, and I think they kind of balance each other out. Because for me, being a lifelong coffee drinker, you get that boost of energy, but then you come back down the other side. So again, I think we end up in the same spot. But again, if you have a meeting and you've got to have that quick pick-me-up for a meeting, a cup of coffee is going to do it. And I think this is why it's so popular amongst so many people. The other side is it's addictive. It's extremely addictive. And you actually end up with dependence on it. And like a lot of drugs, that one cup won't do it for anymore. And then you need two. And then you need three to kind of get the same reaction. And it almost becomes a schedule. And again, that's that addictive properties that we know so much about. Obviously, with those addictive properties comes the withdrawals like any drug. If you try to stop coffee, and I think a lot of us have, you know you get that craving, you get the headaches, you get all these other symptoms. Now, the positive side, there's been a lot of studies that have shown positive effects of drinking coffee. There's a few things about the negatives, but they tend to be related to people with certain situations or conditions. I'm sure we've all heard that coffee does have antioxidants and other good things in there. Magnesium, potassium, niacin, so there are good things in the coffee, but again, I think it's that moderation that we have to keep in line. Some research has actually shown a protective quality for some of these things, such as type 2 diabetes, Parkinson's, liver disease, cirrhosis, liver cancer. And that might be something to think about. If you have those kind of conditions that, hey, maybe this cup of coffee isn't that bad, and that little bit of pro is worth a little bit of the negatives that a few people have. I did find this an interesting read. Coffee and Health, a review of recent human research. And I'm going to have the link below. So I'm going to read this exactly how this paragraph was. And they said, The majority of studies on the health and effects of coffee consumption in humans are observational. Concerns about potential health risks of coffee and caffeine consumption raised by Epidemiological research in the past were likely exacerbated by associations between high intakes of coffee and unhealthy behaviors, such as cigarette smoking and physical inactivity. Now, we know they do this with meat already. They will say, hey, meat causes cancer. Meat causes this problem. Meat's really bad for you. Oh, how do we know that? Because... Well, we interviewed a bunch of people coming out of a fast food joint. They all had obesity. They had heart issues, and, and they were eating meat. They had a burger. Of course, they don't count the fries, the milkshake, and the apple pie that has more sugar than a candy bar. A few things, though, obviously all people know is if you drink a cup of coffee before you go to bed, most people are going to be kind of staying awake and not have as consistent sleep. There are some people that can drink coffee and go to sleep. I used to be one of those. I could drink an espresso and I could still go to sleep. Again, that dependency and withdrawal, you're always going to want to have that cup of joe. You're on the road. Oh, we got to stop at this roadside to have a cup of coffee. Otherwise, again, those headaches and other things are going to come back if you do have to get away from it. Some people who have acid reflux, high blood pressure, anxiety should probably avoid coffee. It's not going to be a good mix for those people as that's just going to keep exaggerating those effects and probably do worse. 
Now, most of the articles did mention excessive coffee, and they put that at about four to five cups. And obviously, that's going to bring in some other symptoms altogether, a higher heart rate, anxiety, and everything else. So I think, again, in that moderation. So if we're thinking three cups a day, you're probably good. Four to five is getting in that range that they think is excessive. My closing thoughts on this whole controversy of coffee, again, test it for yourself. This is your journey. I do think for some people who are still on this journey, they're still losing weight. They're either on meds or coming off their meds for, say, diabetes and other things like that. We heard earlier how that can help some of these conditions. I would say don't try to quit. Just keep drinking your coffee for now. Let's get to that plateau weight where you're happy. Maybe you've come off meds, your joint pains have gone away. So once you're at that plateau and you've healed substantially, I would say quit for three months. And the reason I say three months is I think that gives you enough time to actually break the addiction. This one week or one month isn't long to break the addiction. And once you can break that once, you know that you control coffee and it doesn't control you. And you also get a very good rest from it and your body. Then if you want to, try to drink another cup. Again, have one in the morning. See how you feel. The next day, the same thing. And then again, we just have to decide what we're going to do and how we feel. If you do decide to keep drinking coffee, I do say in one year, try it again. This time I feel you could just quit for a month because that three month kind of gave you the idea, yeah, I can do this. So one month, let your body heal up, drink coffee again and see what happens. Does it affect your gut? Did it give you the anxiety back a little bit that you didn't notice? After that one year mark, you'll probably heal in ways that you didn't think were even possible and be kind of further down that road of healing and might decide, yeah, I'm starting to notice these other little side effects I don't like. Or not, then you can have more coffee. Hope you liked this video. If you did, hit those buttons and a hui ho.